In this video, we're going to talk about the maxillary artery, which is one of the terminal branches of the external carotid. Departing it around the level of the tip of the styloid process, the maxillary artery winds around the neck of the mandible bone here to move into the deep structures of the face and to eventually terminate by division within the pterygopalatine fossa, which is the space you can see here between the maxilla, the sphenoid, and the palatine bones. The maxillary artery tends to be divided into three parts based on each part's relationship to the lateral pterygoid muscles. Let's make the mandible transparent to appreciate this a bit more clearly. So we divide it into the mandibular part, the pterygoid part, and the pterygopalatine part, which enters the pterygopalatine fossa. There are said to be five branches from the first part, five branches from the second, and six branches from the third. The first two branches of the maxillary artery aren't included in this model because they're so small. Those first two branches are the deep auricular artery, which departs to supply the external acoustic meatus, this passage in the temporal bone here, and the anterior tympanic artery, which, like the deep auricular artery, departs from the proximal maxillary and heads through this petrotympanic fissure in the temporal bone, a very small slit or fissure in that bone to be transmitted to the middle ear where it supplies the tympanic membrane. The next branch of the maxillary artery is the middle meningeal. It passes through the foramen spinosum of the sphenoid bone, which we'll head inside the skull to gain a better appreciation of. So this is the sphenoid bone. And this is the foramen spinosum, its most lateral foramen, and this is the middle meningeal artery passing through it. The middle meningeal has a broad branching pattern and supplies the bones of the calvarium as well as the dura mater in this area. It is frequently implicated in the pathology of extradural hemorrhage. In the context of this thin part of the temporal bone here being shattered by trauma, the middle meningeal will rupture. The arterial blood will cause a separation between the periosteal layer of the dura mater and the bone itself and cause compression on the brain. Next, we have the inferior alveolar artery, which enters a hole in the mandible called the mandibular foramen and supplies the body of the mandible as well as the mandibular teeth. That's the inferior alveolar artery. It has this mental branch which passes through the mental foramen of the mandible to supply part of the lips and the skin in this area. Our next branch is the accessory meningeal artery which passes through the foramen ovale of the sphenoid bone. Again, let's look inside the skull to appreciate that a bit better. So there is the accessory meningeal artery passing through the foramen ovale, to supply the trigeminal ganglion. Next, we have the masseteric artery, which isn't included in this model, but which accompanies the lingual nerve in its path. So that's the lingual nerve there. And then it goes on to supply the masseter muscle, which is just here. Next up, we have the pterygoid artery, which supplies the medial and lateral pterygoid muscles. We have the deep temporal artery, its anterior and posterior branches, which both pass behind the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, supplying the muscles in this region and anastomosing with the middle temporal artery. Next, we have the buccinator artery, which, as its name would suggest, supplies the buccinator muscle, one of the muscles of mastication. Now, to, to appreciate the next branch, we'll remove a number of bones of the nasal cavity to eventually reveal the sphenopalatine artery just here. Now, even if we remove the palatine bone, it's very hard to appreciate this artery on this model. 
So I'd encourage you to go and check out my video on the Terrigo palatine fossa, which gives you some perspective on that area and the branches of the maxillary artery that run through it in a more schematic kind of context. So go check that out if you're interested. For now, take my word for it that this is the sphenopalatine foramen through which the sphenopalatine artery passes. Okay, next up for discussion is the descending palatine artery which passes through the greater palatine canal. That's the descending palatine artery. We then have the infraorbital artery passing through the infraorbital canal and emerging from the infraorbital foramen. It gives off two further branches. They are the anterior and middle superior alveolar artery, which aren't included in this model. The next branch coming from the maxillary artery proper is the posterior superior alveolar artery, which if we make the maxilla transparent again, we can see that supplying the maxillary teeth. That's the posterior superior alveolar artery. We then have the pharyngeal artery, as well as the artery of the pterygoid canal, which again, I'll have to refer you to my video on the, uh, on the pterygoid palatine fossa to best appreciate. So there we have it, all of the 16 branches of the maxillary artery. We can remember them with the mnemonic, damn I am, pissed drunk, but stupid drunk, I prefer, must phone Alcoholics Anonymous. To go through these, let's bring in um, this slightly different version of our model with all of the bones of the skull made transparent. We have the maxillary artery in cyan in the center there. So let's go through our mnemonic. First, we have the deep auricular artery, then the anterior tympanic. We have the middle meningeal artery, then the inferior alveolar artery. We have the accessory meningeal artery, then the masseteric artery. We have the pterygoid artery and the deep temporal, its anterior and posterior branches. We then have the buccinator artery, then the sphenopalatine, the descending palatine artery, the infraorbital the posterior and middle superior alveolar arteries, the pharyngeal, anterior superior alveolar, and the artery of the pterygoid canal. There you have it. That's it for the maxillary artery. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, hit subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.